Here's a look at my vacuum pump that I made out of a refrigerator compressor. I built this years ago, but I never actually got the chance to use it for what I intended to use it for, and that is for some high voltage experiments or construction of high voltage apparatus, and where, you know, where I would need to pull a vacuum. And looks like I'm finally gonna get the chance to use it. But let me just do a quick video to show you this thing by itself. I put it on this nice wooden board here. I got a valve here for the, the vacuum output and just, you know, quarter inch PVC pipe. And actually it's not necessary to cut open the lid like I did here, but I did that anyway when I first built this thing just so I could see what was on the inside and what went where uh, to figure out what's going on with this thing. And I put this aluminum foil cover on it to, uh, because when this thing actually runs, it squirts up oil. Normally the oil would go on the top of the lid and then spread down, and that's how it helps to keep itself cool by circulating the oil all around inside the, uh, the dome. But put this on just to keep the oil uh, to go down back inside the bowl. There you can see all the, the copper coils on the induction motor down there. And this is the piston right here. This actually moves in and out in this direction. And uh, while this thing is the rotor going, or the, there we go. You can see how it, how the, the motor moves the piston in and out. Basically right here is the vacuum input. It'll pull a vacuum on this tube. Um, no, this, I think I had to put this here myself because I cut the whole thing open. Uh, but normally if you didn't cut it open, then you would, you wouldn't have to certainly put anything on the inside. Uh, but that's how it looks. And I'm going to turn it on for the first time in many years and we'll see what happens. There you go, you can hear it. I tried pulling the aluminum foil off of it, but it's just splattering oil all over the place, so I'll keep that on. Here, I put a plastic sheet on top so you can actually see what's going on here when this thing is on. There we go. You can see the oil squirting up and going all over the place inside. Okay, now I'm going to hook this up to my homemade vacuum gauge and see how effective it still is. Let me see if I can open this up. There we go. This is a real creative method, I think, to make a vacuum gauge. You can just take any ordinary pressure gauge where you input a pressure and then the, the needle will, will rise up. But in order to turn it into a vacuum gauge, you just have to leave the, the input of the gauge exposed to atmosphere through that hole right there. And you pull a vacuum from the atmosphere all around it. And so that's what I did here. I just hook up the vacuum hose to here and it'll pull vacuum from the glass jar and um, ideally, it will be best to use a 15 PSI gauge, it was 15 PSI full scale, because atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 PSI. But this one's good enough. So let me put this back together. Hook up the hose. And let's see what we get. I remember years ago I was only getting about 13 PSI or so. You know, it was just one or two PSI short of a perfect vacuum, but it's looking pretty good now. 14 PSI about, or should I say only only one PSI pressure in inside the jar, but that depends on 
the accuracy of the gauge itself, and I'm not so sure how accurate it really is. Hopefully the, uh, the vacuum will be much less than this, and we can get some good use out of this for my uh, voltage probe, my high voltage probe construction technique that I'm going to have in another video. Thanks for watching.